All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the seventh installment of our Acadiana Business Resource Webinar Series. My name is Andre Bro, and I work on the team at One Acadiana. Our Acadiana Business Resource Webinars are brought to you by business resource partners from across the Acadiana region, including One Acadiana, LIDA, Opportunity Machine, the Downtown Development Authority, the Louisiana Small Business Development Center at UL Lafayette, Acadiana Workforce Solutions, the United Way of Acadiana, and other local chambers and economic development offices from across the Acadiana region. We have come together to support Acadiana's business community, particularly our small businesses, in response to COVID-19 by hosting a series of webinars on timely and relevant topics. Today's webinar focuses on Louisiana's tourism economy post-COVID-19. After the presentation, we will use the remaining time for Q&A. As you have questions for our panelists, please enter them into the Q&A box and select all panelists from the Ask menu. We will be recording the questions as we go. If we do not have time to get to your question during today's webinar, we will try to follow up with you as soon as possible afterwards. I will now turn it over to Ben Berthelot, President and CEO of the Lafayette Convention and Visitors Commission, Chairman of the Louisiana Travel Association, and a Lieutenant Governor appointee to the Louisiana Tourism Development Commission. And Ben will kick off our presentation and introduce our other distinguished guests. Ben, the floor is yours. Thank you, Andre and Troy and One Acadiana for recognizing the importance of the tourism industry to our region and to our state. And thank you for all that you guys, along with your partners, are doing to get out great resources to all of us during this tough time. I'm very excited about the panel we have in place, and I just want to briefly do an introduction of them, starting with Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. He has led the state of Louisiana to three straight years of record-breaking tourism numbers. He's no stranger to crisis management, having been on the front lines in Clackman Parish for both Hurricane Katrina and the BP oil spill, fighting for the people of Louisiana. Lieutenant Governor, we feel fortunate to have you in this position at this time, leading our state and our industry, and we thank you for joining us. Thank you, appreciate it, man. Randy Daniel is the owner operator of La Pizzeria in Lafayette, which opened February 20th in the face of the COVID crisis. His 20 year restaurant career includes most recently four years with Double R Restaurant Group, which includes Romicelli, Four, and Another Broken Egg. And prior to that, he spent 16 years with Bloomin' Brands, parent company of Outback Steakhouse. In his volunteer leadership role, he currently serves as the Louisiana Restaurant Association Acadiana chapter president. Thank you, Randy, for joining us. Jimmy Saxton is a long standing general manager of the Double Tree by Hilton. As the largest property in the parish, the Double Tree serves as a great barometer of the pulse of the hotel and motel community in our area. Jimmy also serves as the one Acadian appointee to the Lafayette Convention and Visitors Commission Board. Thank you, Jimmy, as well, for being with us. I wanted to start off with just an overview and a few slides that we'll put on the screen of the state of the industry, uh, both in our area and, and the state. So I'm very happy to see those slides. Here in Lafayette Parish, March historically has been our highest year in terms of room revenue for our hotels. Obviously, you can see, uh, started off the month of March, our room revenue up 6.4%, went into the second week of March, and you can start to see the numbers begin to decline. Hotel occupancy dropped 19.8%, room revenue dropped. And then that third week of March, when really, I think almost overnight, the industry began to get crippled. Occupancy dropped 49.1%, room revenue dropped 59.9%. And then the, the last week of March, 58.2% drop in occupancy and 69.4% drop in room revenue. Moving uh, to April, when the stay at home order was in full effect, Andre, if you can go to the next slide. Hotel occupancy week of March 29th through April 4th, down 61.2%, room revenue down 73.7%. And then the last week that we have on record, we'll get more numbers tomorrow, but sort of sees it flattening out at 23.5% occupancy, which was down 64.4%, room revenue down 77.2%, and 
I expect these numbers will uh, remain around the same, if not continue to drop uh, even more as we move forward. Uh, next slide, please. Here in Lafayette Parish, uh, in the meetings, boards and convention business, these numbers do not include leisure or corporate numbers or concerts at the Cajun Dome. We've lost 25,567 room nights that we have record of with an economic impact loss of 43,473,990. So you can see it's a, it's a tough time, obviously, for our industry. Next slide, please. On the national level, these are stats from the U.S. Travel Association. They're estimating a loss of 5.9 million jobs by the end of April. The loss in travel-related jobs alone will more than double the U.S. unemployment rate from 2.5 to 7.1 by the end of April. The expected loss of $910 billion in travel-related economic output in 2020 would be seven times the impact of 9-11. Seven times the impact of 9 11. And the predicted slowdown in the travel sector alone will push the US economy into a protracted recession, just the travel industry. Next slide, please. In terms of our restaurant industry, statistics from the National Restaurant Association. 8 million restaurant employees have already been laid off or furloughed. This represents two out of every three restaurant jobs. The restaurant food service industry lost $30 billion in revenue in March and is on track to lose an additional $50 billion by the end of this month. Four in 10 restaurants have closed their doors, some with no hope of reopening. Over 60% of restaurant owners say that existing federal relief programs, including the CARES Act, will not enable them to keep their employees on payroll throughout the downturn. And then assuming a gradual reopening of the economy in June 2020, forecast sustained losses of $240 billion for restaurants by the end of the year. Thank you, Andre. I think that's our last slide. I wanted to start with the Lieutenant Governor. And Lieutenant Governor, I know you've been in close contact with the Governor's Office as well as fellow Lieutenant Governors across the country. Just recently, you were named to the Governor's Resiliency Task Force. Can you tell us what you are seeing across the state and what sort of conversations you're having in regard to when the state might be able to open up and what that might possibly look like? Right. Thank you, Ben, and thank you all for, for being here. Um, yesterday, we had the conference call with the vice president, and you know we discussed these phases that the president has put the criteria out there. Um, I'm still um, hopeful that uh, by sometime next week, um, we can give the governor some criteria that uh, we can get certain regions of the state open May 1st. The mayor of New Orleans has already extended the stay at home to May 15th. Obviously, her area has the highest impact. Uh, I don't know, based on what we're able to see the numbers through next week, whether the governor will stay in line with that. Um, the main criteria for that phase one is a 14 day uh, average, not 14 days of decline or level, but the average of 14 days with no increase. Uh, and we've, we've achieved that. Now, um, this commission by the governor, which has people from every segment of business community, restaurants, hotels, um, is gonna weigh in on what that soft opening looks like. Um, first, we've got to make sure it works for the businesses. Um, it doesn't make sense to open a third of a restaurant. Uh, can they make it on half the seating? Uh, those are the things that will be discussed. Our first meeting is Wednesday. And then what do we do um, to make the public feel comfortable in getting out? Does the servers wear a mask? Do they check their temperature every morning? So all those things will be discussed and the recommendations will be made the governor and i'm cautiously optimistic that we can put together enough recommendations next week and hopefully uh get if not the rest of the state 
some of the regions open in the beginning of May. But, um, but we've got to make sure it makes sense for the businesses and the public has that comfort level of uh, getting out and shopping and eating in the restaurant. Thank you. I know we'll come back to you here uh, after we hear from our other panelists. Randy, let's go to you. Yeah, your story has been documented having to face COVID-19 just three or so weeks after purchasing uh, La Pizzeria. Also in your capacity as president of the Canada chapter of the Restaurant Association, you're in contact with many other restaurant owners. As I understand it, you have been able to secure some of the federal assistance being offered. Can you just tell us a little bit about your story and what the last few weeks have looked like? Yeah, my, my pleasure, Ben. Thank you for having me. Um, so, you know, we purchased uh, the pizzeria and, and reopened from uh, on February the 17th. And uh, we opened like any other restaurant would after a remodel. About three weeks in, we started to feel the effects of COVID-19. On the fourth week, of course, as everybody knows, uh, we had to shut down to, to maintain safety. Um, immediately, we had to lay off two-thirds of our staff, which is about people. Um, and but we have been able to maintain, stay open through curbside takeaway and delivery services. Uh, we have received a uh, uh, PPP the payroll pro program. But the questions we have now is we don't know if we're going to be able to how to use it properly in terms of we can't reopen the restaurant yet. It's not safe to it's not safe to bring our employees back in the building. Um, so we're going to time deadline. And if we do open at 25 percent or 50 percent, whatever uh, allows us to do, which, which is safe and we're happy to do, we just don't know how to proceed. Um, you know, we've seen across the board about a 43% decrease in sales at this restaurant. And from what I've talked to other restaurants, we're lucky. We're doing very well. Uh, some restaurants just, they can't maintain, they can't stay open right now. Um, last night, uh, we, we, for the Louisiana Restaurant Association, we did a drive through crawfish boil for our annual meeting. Uh, ben, thank you for grabbing some crawfish. And you know, I was talking to Frank Brandle, and you know they're used to having buses, 50, 70 people dropped off on a regular basis at this time of the year. And they're just not seeing that, and they don't know if they're ever going to see it again uh, with the way people are and the way people uh, worry when they go into public places. So we're, we're, we're looking forward to getting opened up again, Ben. We just don't know what to expect and how to do it yet. Right. Thank you, Randy. We'll come back to you as well. And Jimmy, uh, given the size of your property, you were one of the first, if not the first property to have to make cuts to your staffing immediately. I know you're wearing many hats at the hotel with so few staff left on board. Can you tell us a little bit about the store at the Doubletree and what you see as a short-term new normal for your hotel once we're given the opportunity to open and travel back up? All right, thanks, Ben. Um, you know, since since the what the second week of March, about March the 16th, we have um, had to cut our staff. This, as you said earlier, March and April are typically the busiest seasons for the hotel business in our town. And we had our, our staffing at about 130 uh, mid-March, and today we have 12. Um, so we are still open. Uh, we do have enough occupancy for our owners to say, we'll, we'll keep you open. Although our owners have about 60 hotels, they have closed 18 of them. Um, so, you know, we, we, feel, we feel Frank's pain at Randall's because uh, most of those buses, you know, came through and stayed at the hotels in town. So we understand that. We, we do have, you know, the new norm is, you know, no, no food service. Uh, we couldn't sustain food service within the building at the occupancy levels we have. Um, we, we are, you know, we're running about the same number of rooms sold as most hotels in town, but because we have so many, our occupancy is, is much lower than the average. So um, on average, the properties are selling between 20 and 30 rooms a night, it looks like in town, um, and, and we're sustaining that average. So that does, that does keep us open. Um, but as a full service hotel, the, the benefits that we provide during normal times, uh, you know, a bar to go to, food service within the building, meeting rooms for large groups, those things are, are no longer helpful. And it's, it's, it's better, the guests are staying at, at places where the rooms are larger. Uh, they're still offering some type of version of the brand required breakfast that they normally have, which I just don't have the facilities to, to offer something like that. So. 
um, some of that is, is a disappointment for us. But uh, right now we, we plan to stay open. If, if we can keep that 20 to 30 a night, our owners are satisfied with that. And hopefully, you know, sometime around that May the 1st date, we get some at least in-state transient travel to, to help start to uh, boost us. Thank you, Jim. And that's a good segue into our next our next question for the Lieutenant Governor. Lieutenant Governor, the research has shown that once travel is opened up, obviously people aren't going to be hopping on a plane to travel across the country or the world. We're going to have to rely on regional uh, travel, a uh, drive traffic market. And you've been a long proponent of the staycation concept for the state of Louisiana. Can you talk to us a little bit about what, what your plans are from a statewide marketing and what that will look like uh, early on as, as travel opens up? Right. Uh, the first thing we did, we have a, a law that says I cannot spend more than 10% of the tourism budget in state. So we got the legislature to remove that so we can take whatever monies we need and promote right here in Louisiana. Um, we, we, we filmed some shots the other day uh, that we're putting some public service announcements out to ask people to go out and pick up food at your local restaurant to help those that are open survive. The second phase of that, once we get open, is asking people to stay vacation, uh, go out and stay at a hotel, bed and breakfast, shop, eat, to support Louisiana, and something we've done good in the past in supporting our neighboring parishes and state and, and cities around the state. And then the third phase of that will be the drive market. So promoting any and all events we have all over Louisiana uh, to make sure uh, in that drive market uh, where you might not normally promote something outside of your region, uh, we're going to put money behind it to make sure they come in, fill the hotels, and, and get more people from that drive market. And you're absolutely right, Ben. That's what the research is saying. Each week we're looking at that data and knowing that it makes no sense to, to, to try to get people to come in from Chicago uh, out the bat. We're going to have to branch out from Louisiana. Uh, we're going to be highlighting all the great things here in Louisiana. And if we're able to get the rest of the state open well, before New Orleans, we're going to really heavily market New Orleans people uh, or people in that region that the restaurants in Lafayette is back open to, to pull some of those staycation people uh, to your region. Um, but that's going to, this past week, we got over 400,000 in grants for the arts community. Those grants, we hope to get out in the next couple of weeks to help the arts community have that money to promote their events uh, as we get back online. We're working on some grants for the main streets and different areas to help every area of the state have some promotional money, knowing the hotel motel numbers are not giving you the budget you need. We're going to have to make up that difference on a state and we're will on, on the state level and we're willing to do that. Thank you, sir. I know you, you mentioned New Orleans and some of the conversation coming out of New Orleans about not opening up until 2021. Um, one of the effects of that is, is we have had started to have folks reach out to us in terms of scheduling meetings that they were anticipating happening in New Orleans. Another another factor that will play well for our area once we're given the opportunity to, to open back up is we have the, the great investment made by the folks in Broussard and Youngsville with their sports complexes. And the second that those teams are allowed to uh, travel and, and start playing ball again in the summertime, that should be a, a small shot in the arm for our industry, uh, which would help uh, immediately. And then in the fall, we've been fortunate to have uh, several events not not cancel and postponed to the fall. And we're seeing the possibility of having a, a pretty good fall if this thing opens back up in the next month or so. Uh, Jimmy, what are you seeing? Uh, are, are you able to forecast the fall? And are you seeing some of that as well at your property? Okay, so, I mean, we, we have started seeing a, a, a nice uh, rebooking like for August, August and beyond. It, it has surprised me that some of the um, some of the late June, July meetings are postponing, but they seem to be postponing because they're worried about their attendees financially and not worried about could they or could they not have their meeting. 
they're only worried about the burden that it might put on the attendees. So um, we are getting, we have a, a better backlog for August than we've ever had. Um, just, you know, hope that continues. Most those are meetings that have rebooked from here, uh, from the spring. We, we have received a few calls about these uh, New Orleans uh, we, we, we had our meeting scheduled in New Orleans and we'd rather have it somewhere else. So we have received a few of those calls. Um, uh, we haven't booked anything on that yet because, uh, I, you know, as our, our sales team is furloughed, we're seeing if we could get some catering people back in to, to you know, make sure they do the, the space requirements right. Right. That's good, uh, good to hear that. We're starting to get a couple of questions. I'm going to start with a, a question. Let's see, Lieutenant Governor, is if you're hearing, is the governor willing to open the state outside of New Orleans? I'm sorry, say that again, Ben. Uh, the question uh, from a, from a, um, someone on the webinar was, what are you hearing in terms of the governor's willingness to open the state outside of New Orleans? Well, you know, I had the conversation with him yesterday. He's not ready to make the commitment that, but but he didn't rule out that May first date, which is a good thing. We have our first meeting Wednesday. And, and as I mentioned earlier, when we were talking, we hope to have some recommendations to him early next week. And if those numbers continue on the trend they're going, I'm still optimistic we can get open uh, in, in other areas of the state on the, on the first. Um, you know, I had conversations this morning I know in July, Lauren Daigle has a concert in New Orleans and one in Lafayette. And we have a, you know, we work with her as a promoter of tourism. And we've reached out to say, look, if you're going to cancel New Orleans, don't cancel Lafayette yet, because we may get to that third phase a lot quicker and, and still be able to have that show in July. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that, that Lafayette, your region, will. Um, We'll do a lot better out the box of, of um, than the New Orleans region will. So um, what I hope to be able to do is early next week is because we're going to have to give the, the business and restaurants you know at least ten days to know that we're going to pull the trigger and open and, and and make a soft opening so they can you know get their staff back and everything. But um, I think we'll have a good indication on 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 Monday of next week whether that goal can be made or not. Thank you, sir. Another question, I think we just touched on it a little bit. I'm not sure if there's much to add, but the question was, uh, uh, after travel is open, what is the estimate of time frame for convention trade shows events to gear up? And Jimmy spoke a little bit to that uh, in terms of the August time frame, which is encouraging. I know the Cajun Dome has secured the permission from the Bond Commission to, uh, for a loan, a $950,000 loan, to allow them to be able to open up uh, and, and ramp up immediately uh, as we're able to. And so that, that is encouraging uh, as well, Jim. Uh, Robbie Bush, question, is it legal in Louisiana to offer, to only offer prepaid clients credit for future travel rather than offer a refund or credit? I'm not sure. We have anybody who knows the answer to that, Robbie, but we can, we can try to get that for you. Does anybody know the answer to that question? And I can tell you this, when we had to cancel the state parks, what we did is if you take a credit, um, we're giving you an extra two nights, one on each end of your stay at the cabin, um, as opposed to taking a cash back. So we gave them a little incentive to, uh, to take that credit instead of taking a refund um and, and i think we got an opinion on that it was legal I, i'm not a lawyer so i couldn't give you legal advice on the, the, the question but that's what we're doing to try to keep them on the books to come into louisiana right thank you i want to encourage everybody to please uh, send your questions to the q a uh, portal um, in the meantime randy one of the discussions we're having here is in regard to our e, e lafayette campaign that supports locally owned restaurants and it's hard to plan for that when we don't know what what that looks like. If a, will a restaurant be at 50% uh, capacity? Uh, are they going to be still doing to go and and all of those things? What are you 
what, what scenarios are you looking at? And I would think it's, it's, it's more profitable, obviously, to get people in your restaurant and drinking adult beverages and, and spending money. Uh, but at the same time, you may have to continue some sort of to go to go capacity. What, what are you looking at in those regards? <laughs> I think we're definitely going to see a shift for a long term on a, a, the, the, the amount of takeaway food we sell. Uh, historically, if you were doing 15%, that was high. Uh, I estimate moving forward, we're going to see about a 45, 50% uh, for a while. Um, and and we, we need to throw some thank yous out to our uh, to ATC. They allowed us to all start selling uh, bottled wine and bottled beer to go. So, for example, last week we were able to do a virtual wine dinner. We teamed up with uh, uh, a vendor and, and they actually had a 45 minute seminar while everybody ate dinner. So I think you're going to see some things coming out like that. Uh, I don't think we're going to, if we open the doors tomorrow, I think we would get a rush and all of a sudden everybody would kind of back off a little bit again. Uh, so we're going to have to be inventive and figure out ways to take care of our customers, both at home and in the restaurant to make up for that void of restaurant time. Thank you. We're starting to have some, some more questions come in. So thank you to those who, a question from Allison. Uh, what are, what are some of the tactics you are considering to raise the public's comfort levels upon uh, reopening? That's for all panelists. I'll just start from what what I know, and the, the Cajun Dome is ramping up in that capacity for sure. Uh, in terms of sanitization, I know our hotels are going to be doing the same thing. Our restaurants are doing the same thing. Lieutenant Governor, you talked you touched a little bit about the importance of that as we open up. Do you have any other uh, insight to add? I've, um, you know, what I did in my office, I reached out to every group that I could touch. Like I spoke at an LNG conference in Houston, and I reached out to that group to try to get them to book a conference uh, later this year, early next year in Lafayette. Um, because I had, and I've reached out to every group I've gone all over and spoke to, to try to get them interested in booking their next event here. And I think that customer service uh, of, of any and all groups, uh, large and small, that we can reach out to and let them know we're going to be open for business and whatever we got to do to accommodate them uh, get, might, may give us a leg up on, on them just deciding where they might go. So I think that public um, reaching out both from your, your team uh, and our tourism team reaching out to those groups. We've also reached out to a lot of the national uh, bike racing people which is a group that wants to get back out there. I know we, we talked to a group out of Natchez, Mississippi. Um, their giveaway is going to be a, a mask for their bike race there, and we're encouraging them to, to try to come do one in Louisiana. So any of those groups that we can give any incentive to to come and, and stay in, in Louisiana, um, we're trying to really be leaning forward in doing that. Yeah, we, we have had Cyclo Zydeco rescheduled to the fall. Uh, great bike ride festival on wheels. That, that'll be great for our Jimmy uh, or Randy, uh, in terms of safety of your customers moving forward, uh, what does that look like differently? I know y'all are already doing some of that. Yeah, I'll go first. I mean, just, you know, Hilton as a brand has, has been, you know, very informative of what they want to do. And regardless of your staffing uh, levels, uh, that you you have to you know touch the uh, get sanitize these high touch points um, you know door handles elevator buttons telephones any you know remote controls anything that that is being touched um, is where we sanitize um, with the the chemicals provided by our uh, third party vendor so I mean we're we're doing that still routinely. Um, and, and we're doing it, you know, three times a day in the public areas, and then we're making sure the guests that we, the rooms that we are selling are being taken care of the same way each night. Very good, Randy. Anything to add? Yeah, I, I just want to say uh, I think Jimmy's industry and, and the restaurant industry are both really fully prepared for this. The difference is we're going to be bringing a lot of things we do behind the doors of the customer to the forefront. Uh, meaning, you know, for now, we're going to have sanitation stations set up in the restaurant for customers. You're going to see employees wearing masks, salt and, salt and pepper shakers coming off the table so that we can sanitize them in between each use. Uh, but, we, you know, we've been training for this. This is what this is normal for us. Uh, I think the biggest change is going to be the customer is going to actually see what we're doing. The other thing that's very important is training on our hourly level. 
Um, we've always been very strict and strong on our training for the management level. But now you'll see, like, for example, the Louisiana Restaurant Association offering free courses to anybody that wants to take COVID-19 uh, training as far as what safety is. And I think education for our level is going to be very key and important. Thank you. Another question uh, from Ann for the Lieutenant Governor. Have you heard anything about casinos reopening with limited capacity? Is that something y'all going to be working on? The, the, um, the one of the committees on this board is represented by the casinos and some of the comments that have coming back to me have been trying to get them uh, in this phase one by limiting every fourth machine and instead of seven people at a blackjack table five. I don't know if that's going to make the cut or not, but that is being discussed because I know they are anxious to get back online and the state's anxious because of the tax revenue they provide. So right. that is one of the top subjects uh, for this commission. And I'm sure the recommendation, there will be a recommendation back to the governor, whether we can get to that comfort level to get them in this first phase or not, I'm not sure. Another question for you, Lieutenant Governor, from Janet. What are your thoughts about the potential fall wave slash surge of COVID-19? The third wave? About the Sorry. potential fall, fall wave or surge again in the fall. Yeah, um, they say we can expect a, 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 another, um, you know, the professional health people are saying that. I think, and, and whoever mentioned the training, was an excellent idea because I think everybody's well aware of the distancing and the mask and washing your hands. I think it's going to be really up to us when we get back open to make sure everybody's changed their way of greeting people. And, and I think it's going to, in, in my discussions with the national health people, it's really going to be up to how well we react to keeping our distance and, and operating differently, whether we see that wave come back or not. But they have one of that potential, but there's no, you know, it, it's only a, a thought that they expect it. How bad it will be, we don't know. Right, and Diane had sort of a, a question along those same lines. She wanted to know, will social distance guidelines be observed during concerts and other large gatherings? And if so, how are they gonna manage that? From the audience compliance. I'll just answer that from my conversations with the Cajun owners. They know that's going to be part of the new normal. And I think every every venue in the country is going to go on through the same thing. And I don't think anybody knows exactly what that looks like right now, but certainly everyone knows that it, it will look different than it does than it did prior to COVID-19. Question <clears throat> another question for Lieutenant Governor, very popular this morning. <laughs> Are there any plans to pull attractions to get a feeling for when they will open and how they plan to change operations or market to accommodate a tentative public? Can the state make right. recommendations to attractions in this regard? Yeah. Well, we've been reaching out to, to the ones that we know, and we've reached out to our regional partners like you. Anything that, you know, we were telling people, don't cancel anything. Uh, that's not going to cost you money to cancel it. Wait to the last minute, because if, if, we're, if we keep this thing heading south, uh, we'll be able to get to that third phase, which is large crowds, a lot quicker than a lot of other states um, if we do it right. And so um, one of the things, Ben, that we've discussed and we're ready to do is that regional tourism promoting of all the great things in your region, uh, both in state for staycation and then any events once this thing that we if we know um, these events are going to take place we're going to put additional money behind them um, knowing how important it is that the restaurant shops hotels bed and breakfasts um, that we we, we got to do a little better at getting them back full quickly because that could be the difference in some of these uh, businesses making it or not so uh, as we see those and and I've been asked to call and talk to some of the conference people and reassure them that they don't need to cancel in July and August, uh, just like the Lauren Dago event. So any assistance that I can give for any of those events, um, I'm willing to do that. 
Thank you. I just wanted to follow up directly as it relates to the attractions. We, we operate a visitor enterprise grant program every year, and we're about to roll that out. And one of the situations we're looking at is in the past, the funding could not be used for operations. It could only be used for marketing our infrastructure. And we're considering opening that up for one year to allow for operation expenses, because we know that once attractions are able to open, that it's gonna to be tough like it will for any business to turn, to be able to even turn the lights on and, and bring staff back. So that's one of the things that we're hoping to be able to roll out as part of our visitor uh, enterprise funding. Let's see, then, question. Yes. And then knowing that the, the marketing funds are gonna be limited for everybody because um, as we put these staycations together regionally, uh, we want to make sure we're working with you to include all of those attractions to help promote them uh, in our promotional dollars that we're spending, um, knowing that they're going to have limited resources. So make sure we cover all aspects of that when we're putting these staycations together. Thank you. Another question from Robbie. Uh, will, let's see, can the state offer a prepaid voucher that would include a lodging, sightseeing, and food? The state travel agency could handle the payment of the admissions to participating businesses. If overwhelming, you could use local agencies to assist state travel um, agency. I, I don't think the state can, but the CVBs can. And so if that's something that works for your region, we can support it um, with some type of grant. But I think it's got to be done by a regional CVB because the state law limits us on some of the things we can do. But if you put a grant program together for your region like that with a package, we can um, either help fund it or we can help promote it um, all over the South. Um, so that's a great idea and it's something that will lure people in. And, um, you know, we're, we're even... When we're reaching out outside of Louisiana, we're going to offer some incentives to come stay at the state parks. Uh, to you know, when people are looking at which state am I going to go to, we're going to really push some incentives out um, for the state parks to get them to come to Louisiana. Absolutely, and the scenario Robbie referenced is one that generally happens often with international travel, where they come uh, with a prepaid voucher uh, and not having to have their their form of currency. That's generally operated by a third party uh, operator, but it's a great it's a great idea and something that we'll certainly look at uh, as well as we move forward. Okay, let me see if there's any other questions here. Andre, are you seeing any questions that I'm not able to open up? Yes, yeah, so there are some other questions coming through in the Q and A box, um, which you might need to uh, look for. If you click the dot 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 icon, you should be able to find the menu for that. But I'll throw one out there um, from Dana about the outlook for larger gatherings like concerts. What does the outlook look like for larger gatherings like concerts? I don't think anybody knows right now. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, you you may have the most insight on that, but I think we're all just sort of waiting to see what what that. Yeah. You know, I looked at the, the, the requirements, obviously the concerts are in the phase three rollout. I believe, and, and I'm always leaning forward on this, and I got in a little trouble for telling the mayor she moved too quickly to cancel St. Patrick's Day and had egg on my face because she was right and I was wrong. But, uh, you know, when I talked about the Lauren Daigle in July, um, I, I think that's doable. Um, and I think, you know, you, you, you need a month or two to promote those events. So, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic that we can keep that event and start seeing events planned, you know, August, July, August, September. Um, they got to be comfortable. They can sell the tickets and people have to be comfortable going into those large arenas. You know, it's going to be interesting to see what college and, and the NFL does uh, with, with the, and, and I think that will, Give us if they announce they're going back full force, uh, that will help open it up a lot quicker. And if they feel comfortable, those people are going to go to the games. People obviously will be comfortable going to concerts and large events. So I think it's unknown, but I think as quickly as we get open and we don't see the numbers escalate, then people will get comfortable going to those large events. 
but I'm optimistic that the July Lauren Daigle thing will stay stay on track. Thank you, and we'll give you a break, and maybe Randy or or Jimmy a question from Maggie. Uh, what do you think the uh, the long? I'm sorry. Let's see. Do you see do you see benefits packages and plans changing for hourly workers in your in your in your segment? And I, I, you know, I, I don't know of anything right now that's going to change on that. Uh, you know, that's honestly just far beyond where we are at the moment. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I would, I would say the same thing. I think we're going to, we'll, we'll start calling back, you know, room attendants first, um, and then. Uh, I mean, you, you really won't see a, a package from ownership. I just think there might be some some different, maybe some different government aids to subsidize um, reduced hours even after they start back. Thank you, guys. We had a, another question about crawfish seizing and any impact on that. I have not heard of anything. I don't know if any of our other panelists have. We had some good crawfish last night from Randall's. I'll put in a plug for, for Randall's on that. Okay, question earlier from Rob. Are any of you seeking refinancing of exi existing debt through the new available debt credit facilities with lower rates available? I know, Jimmy, your ownership handles a lot of that. And Randy, you're relatively new. And uh, is there any insight on that, maybe from what y'all are hearing from others in the industry? No, I'm, I'm sorry, but no, I haven't been hearing much through that. Okay. Uh, question from Ricky. Is state and local government going to waive property tax for hotels? Uh, my understanding, the governor has pushed back a state sales tax for collection for two months, ending April 30th. Locally, that decision is made by the sales tax collector. Uh, and I was told this week that they are moving forward with March collection. A question from Sam, are there any other restrictions that have been discussed on reopening other than a limitation on building occupancy? Has anybody heard anything other than that, Lieutenant Governor or, or Randy? The uh, yeah, there's a list of things in the president's recommendations for phase one. Um, you know, recommending older people and people with pre-existing conditions continue to shelter in place, keeping the distance, no larger than 10 people in one group. Um, um, you know, the um, the um, uh, uh, non-essential travel is not going to be permitted. Um, and, you know, coming up with the, the criteria for making the workers safe in the workplace um, you know, whether it's checking temperature, I talked about it earlier. So all of those things are in phase one. Um, and then it gets a little bit more open. Uh, for instance, bars are not allowed to open in phase one, but are in phase two, which stand in room only. Um, so those criteria uh, uh, change as you get to the different phases. Thank you. A question from Anita. She's hearing lots of feedback from restaurant, bar, and cafe owners who are concerned that the federal government is essentially competing with small business owners because they can make more money on unemployment than they can actually going to work. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, can you weigh in, in if you're hearing the same? Absolutely. Thing? You know, we, early on with our congressmen, and, and I think that's what happens when you, you send people to Washington that haven't worked or owned a business. Um, yeah, they equivalent to making about twenty-one dollars an hour unemployment and the stimulus money. How are you going to get people to go back to work? Um, that's going to be a tough challenge when they could stay home and make twenty-one dollars an hour, as opposed. And we said that from day one that whatever that package is, it should mirror as you go back to work, um, because it's going to be tough to get some of those people 
to go back to work till that money runs out. Thank you. A question from Danielle. Spring festivals were able to reschedule for the late summer fall because their funding had been secured before the stay at home order. What advice do you have for fall festivals who would be gathering funds and sponsorships now but cannot do cannot due to the economic shutdown? We've seen several fall festivals say we'll see you in 2021. I'll start with that one, uh, Danielle. We're, we have seen several of our spring festivals move to the fall. Uh, Cyclo Zydeco uh, being one that will happen the same week as Festival of Connie Ann and Creole. I mentioned earlier the Visitor Enterprise Fund that, that we operate, which will uh, be a small amount of funding for some of our uh, festivals and attractions and uh, museums. But Lieutenant Governor, you guys also run um, a few different grant programs. Have y'all had any, dis any discussions about if those might look a little different this year? Absolutely. We're going to increase them. And we're also going to know that um, the marketing money is going to be limited both with what you're able to do and with those events. So that's where we're really going to try to help um, through social media and advertisement to really make sure all those events uh, reach out to, to many more people. So as, as, those, as we see those things, bookings, we're gonna, our marketing team is gonna make sure we market them to the right people to make sure they're well attended. Um, and we're gonna be willing and ready to do that depending on what it takes per event to make sure we reach enough people and make them successful. Thank you, David asked, what about museums and dance halls? Will, will we be able to open as well? And if so, do you think there will be a six foot rule by example, it's hard to two step six feet apart. <laughs> Yeah. That's, that's a great that's a great question i just wrote that down for the committee um obviously in phase one the six foot rule is still in place whether you can just uh that's 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 a tough one um whether they open back up in phase one but but don't allow close dancing um uh, that's going to be something to, to be discussed just wrote that question down. One I hadn't gotten before. That's a good question. Go ahead, we can give you a new one. Uh, and then along those lines, you were talking about the different phases. Lieutenant Governor, have you heard if phase three includes sporting events as well, like college football and baseball? Has that has that been any, any has there been any conversation on that? You know, the, the phase three is the um is opening back up. They didn't specifically list college or sporting events in it, but it does allow for fairs, festivals, concerts, and things like that. Um, but I'm sure uh, everybody's waiting for the college and, and the pro football to come out with what their plan is. And I suspect they're going to wait as long as possible as well, because I, I, I don't think either one of them wants to have football games without standing people in the stands. Right. Another question from Maggie, what do you think will be the long-term changes in the hospitality industry after the pandemic, i.e. more pedestrian friendly planning, revenue generating, virtual events, et cetera? And I'll, I'll just say, I, I think all of the above it, it will be a, a little bit different. And, and certainly we had, we're having those conversations uh, internally. I, I do believe there's been some talk now that everybody is meeting uh, virtually or like we are on Zoom. What effect will that have on the media industry? I think there was there, was, there may be early on, but I, I still do believe that the media industry will bounce back. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, any thoughts on that, or, or Jimmy, from what you guys are hearing? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll go. I mean, we we do expect some type of change from you know a virtual meeting, but I mean, we're hoping that's a short term, at least, um, you know, un until until the fear of this has subsided, whether that be the fall or next spring, um, we expect to have more of that. We've, we've, you know, reduced our forecast for a full year impact. Um, although that ramps up slightly, it, it's still probably half of what we had expected um, going into this. Um, I, I do want to say there's a, there's a question about uh, the wedding industry, and, and I, just, I just don't know if we skipped it or we we're getting to it, but I just wanted to answer that if, if you have a, a wedding scheduled for May, 
we don't see many of those remaining, and we are hearing that, you know, the, the churches, their, their schedules are filling up quick for late summer, early fall, and then uh, reception venues as well that due to the, the postponements, there's, you know, this, the, um, our, our itineraries are filling up fast. So if, if you're on the fence about that, you might should, should go ahead and pull that trigger. Yes, and I, I think, you know, as, as we do start to reschedule events, at, at some point, you're going to run out of dates. Obviously, the wedding industry is a good example of that, and other venues across the state, which are harder to get into uh, already, like the, the Morial Center in New Orleans. And, and so the, the, that's another point we haven't really talked about, but at some point, you're going to run out of different, different dates available, and so you'll have to, instead of pushing it back to the fall, you'll have to push it back uh, to the spring. What about, see a question from Cindy, what about festival type situations where they are outside? And I think those, those certainly have a better chance of, of uh, probably allowing a comfort level for the, for the public. And I wanna go back to one of the questions earlier. I think you know, all, everybody's gonna be in the same position from a, from a financial standpoint, whether you're a nonprofit or festival, it's gonna be very hard uh, to raise money, which is why we're trying to open up our grant program uh, for other things outside of infrastructure and marketing. So I think that's going to be a challenge for everybody is, is raising money to try to put on not only different different festivals and, and events, but but also nonprofits and, and all the different scenarios that we're experiencing, homelessness and, and all those other other scenarios that, that come along with the, with the COVID-19. Lieutenant Governor, a question from Fran. Do state parks plan to offer discounts when they are open? Yeah, we're working on all kind of promotional because we know the people we when we shut them down uh, about 65 percent of the people were were staying in there were from out of town and what we want to make sure is as they're planning their next uh trip that they're looking so we're looking at offering a, a day before if you book a cabin for three nights you get a day before and a day after so you get an extra two nights to keep them in that community spending money. Um, we're looking at a giveaway. Um, so we're looking at all kinds of promotions uh, when this is open back up to, to really reach out to all those people. The good news is we've got all the contacts, everyone that ever stayed at a state park, so we can reach out and touch them pretty quickly. We're also gonna use that data when you have an event in your region um, to reach out and, and use that to reach all those people that's ever stayed in your region to let them know what's going on in your region, um, something we've never done before. Thank you. We had a, a question from Karen regarding Noel Akadian in December. Should we move it? Um, does the Lieutenant Governor see further restrictions impacting large outdoor events? I just want to say, I, I think personally, it's a little too early to make that decision, Karen. And to see what what the landscape looks like in the next couple of months, and Lieutenant Governor has has mentioned that previously as well. Is what he's trying to the message he's trying to, to get across is let's uh, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Anything else you want to add on that, Lieutenant Governor? Yeah, I would, you know what is is people are calling me saying I've got this event scheduled in July. Do I cancel? What I tell them is wait, mark that date on your calendar when it's going to cost you money not to cancel whether that's putting deposits, whether it's, or, you know, where it's gonna start costing you additional money. And that's the day we need to talk and make that decision. How close are we to phase two or three that would allow that event to happen? And I think, you know, every day things are changing. I think next week, early next week, we'll have a good idea if this May 1st is gonna look, and then by the end of that week, uh, looking at when we set that date for phase one, then we'll start being able to say, okay, it looks like we could get to phase two and phase three in 30, 45 days and, and see those events after that not cancel. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of how we're going to have to work this. Rob hears that Cardinal Capital has seen success finding money for the hospitality industry. I don't know if Rob works for Cardinal Capital, but... Uh, if so, you might want to get with Rob uh, on the hospitality industry. But seriously, I have heard uh, of some different capital companies throughout the state who are 
who are raising money specifically for the hospitality industry. And I think some of that will be coming out in the, in the future through the Louisiana Travel Association uh, and others. In phase three, uh, where we hope to see outdoor concerts, do we anticipate reduced occupancy numbers, which could be difficult to enforce for free public events in public, public spaces? That's a great point. Many of our events are free uh, and outside. Lieutenant Governor, that might be something that the, the committee, Resilience Committee can look at for phase three. Um, but I don't think we've, been, we've heard any concrete answers on that uh, at this yeah, time. I, you know, the, the, the discussions for, for um, concerts and, and things like foot. There's been discussions, everything from every fifth seat being filled. And, and I don't know what that means. Does that mean I get to go to every fifth Saints game? <laughs> and the guy next to me goes, you know, or, or Tiger Stadium, do I get to pick which game I get to go to? I don't know if that's really doable, um, but that's been discussed. So um, we're just going to have to see as we get through this. I'm hoping that this thing ramps down pretty quickly uh, and and we can see normal large events uh, by the end of the summer. And we're, re we're reaching uh, about the end of our time. So I don't know if you want to take one last question or ask for closing thoughts. I think uh, I'm looking at, I think I've tried my best to get to most of the questions and uh, Lieutenant Governor, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give each panelist opportunity for any, any closing thoughts you might have starting starting with you. Yeah, uh, thank you all for, for participating and please reach out to me and then anything we can do um, to help, we're going to be there. You know, I, I we, we had the anniversary of the oil spill yesterday and, you know, we didn't see any light at the end of the tunnel when that thing came ashore, um, yet we came out of that and 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 if any state can bounce back, Louisiana can. So through these difficult times, anything I can do to help, but we'll get through it. And if any state can come out of this better, Louisiana will, because that's what we do. We help our neighbors and we support our local businesses. So I look forward to working with all of you and please call on me if I can help you with anything. Thank you for your leadership. And as I mentioned earlier, we feel very grateful to have you in this position leading our state through yet another another crisis. So thank you. I know your schedule is very, very full. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, Randy, any closing thoughts? We just look forward to getting uh, the restaurant industry back up and running. We look forward to clear direction from the state and all exactly how we're going to do that and the time frame we can do it. We know those answers can't be answered right now. Uh, we, we too thank uh, the Lieutenant Governor for taking the time to speak with us and uh, everybody that's helped this industry and, and of course support local but support all restaurants if you can. Thank you, Jimmy. Closing thoughts? Yep. Uh, just, you know, we're all in it together. We, we rely on the restaurants uh, and the attractions uh, to fill the hotel room. So, you know, we, we obviously see now you can't have one without the others and we hope they open up, you know, at, at 100 percent capacity soon. And and these state staycation options are a fabulous way to start. So any way we can push it. Thank you, Jimmy. I think I think now that uh, if there was any anyone who didn't understand the importance of the tourism industry previously prior to COVID-19, it's becoming more and more prevalent. And, and we've done our, our best to try to, to advocate for the industry prior. But I, I think you have a lot of people finally understanding the importance of the industry and I want to thank uh, all of you for joining the call and, and all of you for what you're doing in the community. And thanks to one Acadiana for giving us this opportunity to talk about the tourism industry. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. And thank you to Lieutenant Governor Nunga, Sir, Randy Daniel, Jimmy Thaxton. Um, and thanks to all of our participants for joining us. Uh, we will be sharing the video recording and other materials from today's presentation within the next 24 hours. Um, we're going to email them to all the participants and they'll be posted on one Acadiana's website. Uh, we hope that the webinar was helpful today and we look forward to offering more webinars in the future. Uh, stay tuned for follow up emails from us and our partners. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you all again and please stay safe. Thank, Thank you. you.